Dr. Joseph Eccles Lowry and Dr. Evelyn Gibson Lowry are civil rights icons. They have made a lifetime commitment to the struggle for civil rights and human rights. I never felt that I could afford to be a Christian preacher and not work for justice. Despite all of his accolades and world renown, actually, he was a Methodist pastor. All of the years that he was advocating for racial justice across the globe, most people, certainly in the communities where he lived, knew him first as an effective pastor. He preached every Sunday. It had to take great strength and courage in facing an unknown to have been met with violence when they embraced nonviolence, to chart a course that had heretofore not been made in the United States. Nonviolence was essential. We would have been outnumbered, slaughtered, had we resorted to violence. What do you do with these fools? Washing down the street, if you throw rocks at them or curse them or even strike them, they won't, they won't fight back. They're strong inside. And it, it changed a lot of people. A lot of white people were changed by the power of nonviolence. He was courageous at a time when being courage um, came at great personal risk for one's safety and, one, and life itself. We'd often get bomb threats, which I wouldn't necessarily know about, but we'd pack up and go over to a member's house. And then bomb threats would come more often, and at some point we were not allowed to answer the telephone. I recall my mother saying, look, we're not running anymore, and so we're staying, um, and we'll be fine. And so then the parishioners would come and sleep on our front porch um, so that we could stay at home. That's probably when I began to understand danger. Mrs. Evelyn Lowry was as committed to uh, racial justice as w was her husband. She was a little more retiring and soft-spoken but no less committed to the cause of racial justice. But they were always together, whether it was a march or a demonstration, uh, they were together. My mom was fearless. Um, if she was afraid of something, I don't know what it was. She was a great comfort, a great source of strength to me. When I was discouraged from times, she would find a way to re reignite and she was courageous and stubborn. Couldn't, couldn't frighten her away. And she inspired me. She was, I think, uh, a, a strong advocate in her own right. She um, created uh, an organization of women in order that they might participate more effectively. And um, she created a civil rights uh, tour to Alabama. And that particular program is still going on. She created it more than 30 years ago. And yet uh, people are trying to carry on that legacy in her honor and in her memory. In 1980, um, the Lowry Institute was formed to honor my dad on his 80th birthday. And so it was um, instituted at Clark Atlanta University. And so we are an organization that attempts to train leaders, or change agents as we like to call them. My job at the Lowry Institute is that I'm trying to take the legacy of Joseph and Evelyn Lowry to a new generation. I think their legacy was having the ability to get others to see their vision and to join them in the struggle. I would say that 
Dr. Joseph and Dr. Evelyn Lowry have been the conscience of America. They are heroes in their strength, in their vision, in their lifelong commitment. They are saints because they have an abiding faith which all of their achievements are grounded in. And they are legends because they deserve to be recorded in the hallowed halls of history. I wouldn't take anything from a journey. I wouldn't take back a day.